Hello, everybody, and welcome to a, another episode of our beautiful, beautiful series, Takeover Throwbacks. Uh, it gets better every time because we get to watch amazing NXT pay-per-views. Um, you're listening, obviously, on the Hallway Wrestling Podcast and on, now on Project Dits for the last few weeks, as you know. Um, this is a part of a bunch of recordings that will be released over uh, the next five or six Sundays, so I do not know which number this is or when it will be released but you're listening to us now so uh whenever that may be um if halloween has passed hope you had a good one hope you stayed safe um i personally don't like halloween but we'll get we'll we'll move past it uh but joining me today enough for me joining me today is a returning guest of the and a big friend of the podcast um i know him and a lot of people know him as standido but you guys uh, for this podcast, now I'm as Mr. Lawson, Chris Lawson. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm I'm, I'm especially good. To, it's been an even better Friday because I got to uh, watch this pay-per-view with you and digest it and uh, really, really enjoy it. Um, this was your choice. Uh, we organized this last night as most podcasts, are, the best podcasts are last-minute podcasts, and uh, <laughs> you picked an absolute banger. Do you want to tell the people what you picked for uh, episode uh, four, five, or six of the TakeOver Trailbox? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I picked NXT R Evolution. I uh, don't have the date in front of me, but it's 2014 and it was uh, main event by uh, Neville against Sami Zayn. Yeah, I think there was someone in the front row with a Christmas hat on, so I'm going to assume it was the end of the year. Um, but yeah, uh, this was like, I want to say it was a great pay-per-view, but it was just a great main event and then a few other good moments in, in between because there was... As with these old pay, old NXT pay-per-views, it's great to go back and have a look and be like, oh my God, the main event is great, as we learned from Finn Balor and Samoa Joe in NXT TakeOver London, as me, when yeah. me and Kieran reviewed it. Um, and it's, but there is a lot of filler that makes you go, wow, look how far NXT has come. Yes, yeah, it's uh, more filler than I remember it being, but um, a few highlights, a couple, I mean, it, it's mostly uh, start, start of the show and finish of the show, like you say. It's just it's, um, but there's there's names on there. There's definitely the name value in it, and just seeing how how it's been six years already, and seeing the p- characters and how they've progressed is quite it's quite something. It yeah, it's it's beautiful. Um, I'd say we just get straight into it. I think that's an we'll we'll talk a lot about different things during our uh, conversation. But let's get straight into it. And the open match was. Um, a very exciting um, under sub 10 minute match if you're looking for good under 10 minute matches look Kevin Owens versus CJ Parker who most of you will know as Juice Robinson who is competing in the G1 right now and one of New Japan's um, rising stars I, I would say even though he's a season veteran at this point um, but um, Owens versus CJ Parker uh, so yeah uh, Owens made an amazing this is his debut uh, an amazing entrance where oh, he yeah. The crowd absolutely loved him, and CJ Parker came out. And as we, as we know, you, we might not have been able to tell at the time, but if you look quite closely, you can tell he is not loving life. He doesn't like it at all. He's doing <laughs> his job for his paycheck, but he is not loving life here, Chris. Is he? No, not at all. It's. Um, I mean, it's funny that that in the opening video package as well, it was more concentrated on Kevin Owens than it was on the actual main event. Like Kevin Owens got the the last shot of it, and. Like I've been wanting it for 14 years. Obviously, referenced uh, if, if people followed him before then. Um, Kevin Owens, it's my time to take over. I just had written down that he, he said, and then just just that the you could tell that they they knew they had something with him just by the opening promo, and then then the massive massive pop that he had when he came out, and the just I mean for me personally as a PWG fan, I mean front and center there was a PWG shirt. Be- just before he came out on his entrance. Um, so it was just nice to have him have a hero's welcome um, in a place that he'd never, never been before. I thought that was, that was fascinating. Yeah, um, for those that don't know, Chris is a huge PWG fan. Um, their champion being um, his... Um, oh, who is it? <laughs> who, who is I wonder who it is. Who but could it, it be? I'm just going to stop my beer right now. Yeah, it, it is Chris's best friend, Bandito, um, who we might have a little bit of a conversation with later, but about later. But Kevin Owens made his name in Ring of Honor and PWG as Kevin Steen, for those who don't know, just in case. Um, he, he had some amazing matches. Just Ring of Honor is the best YouTube channel for free wrestling in the world. Oh, if you go on 
if you go on to their yesterday was the anniversary of Joe against Kabashi, which is one of my favorite matches. Um, but there's Kevin Steen versus Generico with Ladder Wars, which is a prelude to what we're going to talk about later. But mm. there is an some amazing match from Kevin Steen, and this is why NXT was known as the quite indie indie underground um feel, and this proved it because everyone knew who Kevin Steen was. It was not a flat entrance. There was fight owns fight chance. Which changed from fight steam fight. Um, we were talking about it earlier, but the famous shot about um, the the signings where they're all just like huddling around each other. There's like five of them, um, all with the the NXT tracksuits on, and you 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 you've just picked out the big, arguably the biggest names in indies since like the Brian and Nigel era, like and not only indies but Japan as well with Atami and Baylor, Bala. Um, and so, like, just to have that famous shot of them all just in the tracksuits, just standing all coolly on the NXT entrance is still... It's like the uh, championship image where it was CM Punk and Danny Bryan as champions. It's one of those images where it um, sticks with you, I think. Yeah, it was it was quite interesting to see those names, which you will encounter later. Um, but for what it was, um, which was a thing to get Kevin Owens over... Um, CJ Parker played his part. He knew he was, it must be disheartening to go out there and know you were just putting someone else over, but he maybe thought, well, he did at this point, he didn't really think it was going to be of any reward to him. But um, his gimmick was like an ego friendly gimmick. I'm trying, I'm just looking at my notes here. It was a bit strange. It was just, but um, he played his part in this match because I remember this match as being a straight up squash. But mm. then uh, CJ busted open Kevin and I don't know about you, Chris, but I think the bust, the accidental, um, accidental busted open Kevin Owens' nose was made it even better because it made him look like even more of a I hate to use that word these days, badass, but it made him look yeah. like a made him look like a killer. Yeah, I, I completely agree. It's um, especially with that near fall as well. I, I think Kevin was kind of taken by surprise, legitimately, by having his nose busted that when he by the um, palm strike that. It was such a close near fall, and then the blood, and then it just added more to even more distinguishable um, debut match that you can have, really, isn't it? Um, and CJ, like you say, he got, he got, he looked good enough, but he didn't shine the spotlight away from Kevin. And I think that's that's the true form of. It's not necessarily a squash, but if you can have that nice, nice in between, I think it's 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 a great. You can't get that sweet spot often, but if you do, it makes both guys look good, I think. It pays off well. Yeah. Um, the biggest, the big spark was the pump handle shoulder breaker, which was vicious. And yeah. then a big pop-up powerbomb, which finished off CJ Parker. And Owens was just red hot. Um, I, I love it. I love Owens doing the uh, toe pick on Hilo as well. I think him just being such a big guy and just going all out with it. Um and that absolutely, I'm a dive mark, so it's just, it's just what I am. But whenever he does a tope, it's it's always incredible to me. Um, yeah, before, before, such a big guy. Yeah, before we move on, um, I am a huge Kevin Owens fan. And I know you are too. You have had a cameo from him. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. You, uh, I just think he's, what he does, what he, him and Alistair Black on the main roster has potential to be beautiful as well, um, mm. even with the restrictions. But I think I just there's no Kevin Owens piece of work that I don't hate. And he, for my money, it's very hard to say this in the wrestling landscape today. He is a genuinely nice, seems like a genuinely nice man. And yes, um, okay. uh, which is very rare to find. But this he is an amazing wrestler. So under even though he's hyped up, he's underrated. I, I, I feel I don't think people realize how just how good he is. I think um, he's on that Jericho, the Jericho precipice, where it's like he's 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 main eventer, but he's also a mid carder as well, where he can he can go between both of them so easily. Whenever you need your main eventer, he's there. But also, if you need a reliable upper mid carder, he can show that, and he's proven that with Alistair at the moment. Just a reliable hand for the show, where he's just brilliant at any, anything he does. Um, yeah, um, what is your favourite Kevin Owens, Kevin Steen moment? Oh, my. <laughs> um, uh, the El Generico betrayal, the original one. I yeah. I, I have it pictured anyway. Just He has his arm over his shoulder and he just kicks him right in the groin and it's just it's so 
perfectly done from his speech where you think he's retiring and he doesn't retire and going backward and forward and a big emotional hug with Generico and the next thing you know it was final battle 2009 um, I think that sounds right um, and so it, it was just a brutal moment but I think it just played into how he can do every like you know get the crowd on his side and then immediately like I mean like tonight spoiler alert but um but the the way he's able to very cleverly manipulate a crowd as well, it's it's just it was just one of those moments for me. Yeah, um, there are some so many great Kevin Owens moments. I was going um, to say, what's yours? I, I I thought of another one straight away. As soon as um, I, I I I remember the ring in Ring of Honor the tease where the, before he turned heel where he was trying to get Sammy to use the chairs in the tag mm-hmm. match and he just wouldn't. Yeah. I love those subtle teases. Festival of Friendship was amazing. List um, of Payo, List of Jericho needs a shout out as well because that yeah. was so well done. Yeah, the so, List of KO where it was like, why is my name on here? Oh shit. Yeah. And the yeah. crowd's like, oh shit. There's an interview with Jericho on Inside the Ropes that you should watch. It's really, if people are listening, it's like Jericho explaining where it was like, why is my name in here? Oh shit. Crowd realized, bang, game over. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, just Kevin Owens is just. Even when he's a face, he's the match against Rollins, fantastic. Um, yeah. at Mania. Um, yeah. his match against Sami Zayn, I think it might have been Battleground. So many to talk about. Um, I could do a, we could do a KO retro, <laughs> yeah, we could talk. be easily, yeah. Um, and we will not be opposed to doing that if people want to see it. I want to do a lot more content with Chris, so um, oh, get your suggestions in. Um, but next up, uh, it's safe to say, no offense, we took a um, a step down. Um, it was the NXT Tag Team Championship match between the Lucha Dragons and the Vaude Villains. Uh, um, I have my I have my notes that Kalisto and Sin Cara um, share the load, which uh, leads to less botches, which is fair. They're they're not the best wrestlers in the world, but they had a really long reign with these tag titles and had some decent enough matches. Um, but the fact that they weren't in the ring for the whole time kind of helped them both. Um, mm-hmm. Two teams of the past here. Um, Simon Gotch. Um, did you know he buried Enzo Amore? Right? Nobody did. Um, nobody did. Didn't actually. That's brand new information. Yeah, it yeah. ruined the 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 video that ruined you wrestlers wrestling. Oh fans. yeah, yeah. I've never yeah. seen that YouTube video suggested in my for, life ever for years. Yes. You you were looking for Gordon Ramsay, but did did you want uh, Simon <laughs> Gotch buried Enzo Amore? Right? No. Um, standard tag team match and nothing special I have here. If you want to add anything, I don't know. Um, they really built up the Lucha Dragons beforehand with a promo package, and I, I we kind of discussed it earlier where it's kind of like the the two stories of Callisto where he does he does have potential in the ring. Um, yeah, you know they were doing an interview, they were highlighting an interview that he had, and it was just it was kind of poking holes in the thing that you're trying to build with him. Well, them. And it's just, it's, they, they certainly, they haven't, they haven't progressed much. I, I think it's fair to say, unfortunately, in the last six years. I mean, I loved Callisto as um, Samurai Del Sol in PWG, but I think his work in WWE when he transitioned over wasn't as smooth as it could have been. I think that was putting it lightly, and I think they, they just haven't found their feet, and then, I mean, everyone knows what happened to Vaughn Villains, so it's it's just, it's yeah, it's one of those um, times of your forgotten NXT realms, I think, that you go into when you look back at these shows and completely forget about them, and then you're reminded of this this tag match that, oh, yeah, that actually did happen, I do remember it now, but very much paint-by-numbers tag match. Yeah, um, but to be fair, my favourite member of these is Aiden English. Um, he has a YouTube channel where he talks a lot about whiskey. Um, oh, his, fair play to the guy. His, yeah. his stuff at Rusev Day was really good. Um, I'd love to see him on the indies. I wouldn't be opposed to seeing him on the indies. No, yeah. um, in a lot of interviews, he feels like he had a lot more to give, which he did. His stuff at Rusev was very, very good. I did completely had... forget about that then. So it's like, it's, um, yeah, yeah, fair. Yeah, his um, his promo work was amazing. Um I, two years back now as well, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it feels like listen, it feels like we've been through ten years in the last few months. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, the the Vaughn villains had a niche at the time. They were look pretty cool. I think when they can cut Enzo Amore was kind of like 
the beginning of the end. They just didn't really get any any luck in the draw um, from then on in. Um, but like three of these were. Uh, we all know about Sinkara. Terrible, terrible person. I think we can all agree. Uh, but this, in terms of the wrestling, standard tag match. We were like, oh, standard tag match, but we'll, we'll get the hot tag. I didn't really see much hot tag here, unless it was. It was. It was Callisto, but it wasn't. It was. I mean, for, for how quick and agile he is, it wasn't that hot. <laughs> Unfortunately. No, it was very much a cold, cold tag. Um, but. Um, the Looter Dragons won um, and continued their reign. Um, very, they beat the Ascension. I think the Ascension had a long reign, and they um, and then um, so yeah, the the, the Looter Dragons continued their long reign. I'm pretty sure the Revival began their reign off the back of the Looter Dragons, but we will get onto that in um, later takeover throwbacks. The next match, <laughs> was, yeah, this is fun. Uh, Cor- Dylan Ty Dillinger came out. Um, I was expecting a ten, but we were just like, he's a Chris Masters doppelganger, is what I have. Um, it was, and then Corbin came out. Um, who did you think he was, Chris? When I said, oh, here he is. Oh God, I thought it was, I had a couple of beers at this point. I thought it was Tyler Breeze because of the spotlights, and I didn't see him. At that. <laughs> I saw him walking. I saw the spotlights. And I didn't see the you know the big tall man <laughs> before. Yeah. Um, they did a re- foolish they, that I thought this match was, and then yeah, because I knew he was there at the time. Yeah, they did a really weird camera thing where like they zoomed in really quick on his face, and then you re- they realized they went in too quickly and had to zoom out a bit. Yeah, uh, it looked Trust quite strange. Yeah. yeah, it looked quite strange. Um, I have it was what it was. So it, Corbin that, was a squash. That, so, that that is a definition of a squash. Yeah. So what happened here was they spotted Bull Dempsey in the crowd, who presumably is in a feud with Baron Corbin. I was not asked to look it up. And uh, they zoomed. Th- they they had the camera on him for so long that they completely forgot about the match in the ring. And I'm pretty sure they missed the end of days, which is a great finisher. Mm. They yeah, missed. They Cor- play it. Yeah. They missed Corbin hitting the end of days, and uh, he won. And then there was just a stare down with no intent, with the, about the same intensity as. A fucking lead balloon going out. I don't yeah. know how. I don't. I don't know how to compare it. To what it's, to compare it to. Uh, it's night and day compared to the the atmosphere in the arena when Owens was there, and it's just it. It kind of shows the investment of the crowd when hardly anyone's making any noise for you. When you're yeah. trying an intense stare down, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, the intense stare down was also broken by a man in a suit looking very happy in between them. Um, <laughs> which is just it, it. It was bad all around. I think we'll agree. Um, not very good. Um, no bueno. Um, but yeah, we move on quite swiftly. Um, Sammy, there was a visual of Sammy getting ready in the locker room, getting himself psyched up, and a great visual of just KO in the background, mm. just smoldering. Um, yeah. I, I, what did you think of this? I thought this was a great um foreboding, or just a great little little. It's the small things that matters, and I really like this. Really set the stage because I think myself and many others at the time is like, do they reference that they obviously know each other? Or he knows his cousin Generico very well. I mean, like, do they do they even reference that? Do they what do they do? Do they or do they just ignore it entirely? But the fact that it planted the seed so well and like you say, it wasn't much, but it was enough to to let fans know that at least, oh god, like you know that something's going to happen here. And it's hinting towards, oh, maybe they team up in the future. Um, so, I, I mean, they could have just had Kevin come in and completely ignore him and do his own thing. Um, so to have that that kind of segment halfway through to really get people invested. I mean, the running theme of the pay-per-view obviously was Kevin Owens. Um, start to finish from the video package to this backstage segment to the end of it. It was all very well, well orchestrated, I think. Yeah, Um we um earlier on we saw Neville slash Pac getting ready and getting mm. stretched um looking quite um quite uh quite hench uh, even though yes. we know him we know him as zero percent body fat Pac now <laughs> um, he was quite uh, and speaking of people who are very hench now but not but also looked hench back then we had a very interesting storyline here um which me and Chris have a bit of a would love to tweak this match but we had the Ascension who were getting the better of Hideo Tommy for weeks upon weeks, beating the crap out of him, beating the crap out of him. And then one night he came out on the stage and said, I brought a friend. And who debuted but Finn fucking Balor. Kieran, uh, 
uh, Chris, I don't know if you know, but um, co-host Kieran is not is truly in love with Finn Balor. He is um, Finn Balor's number one fan. He ad- adores him. When he won the title, you should have... The episode that we did when he won the title was uh, oh, very oh. emotional for him. Um, he loves loves Finn Balor. So shout out to Kieran's, Kieran's boyfriend, Finn Balor. Um, <laughs> uh, got, uh, he wants Vera to um, divorce so he can uh, marry him. Um <laughs> But yeah, then Finn Balor came out and they had like, yeah, usual, like even the odds. And then they create this uh, match uh, for uh, TakeOver. And it was the Ascension versus Hideo Tami and what appeared, the first appearance of the Demon. Now, Chris, I haven't said this to you, but we've pretty much mutually agreed. What I would have done is have this tag match on a weekly episode of NXT and have Tami or Balor turn on each other. And which gets the Ascension over as winning against this team. And sets up a Tammy and Balor for this pay-per-view. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, who, um, would, who would you have as the heel? We know from uh, his New Japan run right now that Kent is quite good as a heel. I think to get Balor over, you'd want to get him over as a face. So I'd say heel of Tammy versus Balor for this pay-per-view would have been better. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that would work. And that's, um, like I said, it's, uh, you, uh, it's tough with when you get a heel following it. Like, you know, it's not playing stereotypes, but it's the... They were NXT were trying to go against that, and I think they would have found a way for Itami to be a heel, but not not playing into what WWE has done in the past, where it's just playing into stereotypes and everything else. I think it was very much after the last ten or so years they they wouldn't go in that direction. And I think Triple H and the crew could have found a way that, like you say, made an interesting story out of it. Uh, even try, like say, oh, you you stole my thunder. Like that could have been more than enough reason for him yeah. to debut, have the tag match. Then it's time he said, even though I brought you in as a partner, you still stole all my fanfare and my and the fans from me. And that's more than enough character to go off um, instead of relying on stereotypes as WWE has known to do in the past. Um, so that would have been the the. Approach, I think, and it was unfortunately both both tag match matches on the show were kind of duds. Um, yeah, they, they, this was better than the last, but a quick side better note. Than last. Better yeah, than last. yeah, quick side note, Kenta. Um, if you're looking for match recommendations, people, and I don't know if Chris has seen this, but Kenta has one of the best matches I've seen this year on YouTube. Um, not not that it happened this year, but one of the best matches I've seen and uh, caught up uh, with on YouTube. He has from um, Noah. There was a match that lasts one minute from bell to bell against Ricky Marvin, and it is amazing. It is, I. Uh, I've seen highlights. Haven't seen the the thing. That I didn't know it only lasted a minute and whatever though. That's... How do you see highlights of a minute and forty second match? Jesus, that must have been like. <laughs> yeah, I no, no, I just remember seeing them in the ring together. So I don't. <laughs> what? No, but that 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 might have been their five minute match that they had. But there's a match that's one minute right. and forty seconds, and it's just nonstop. And it shows they dropped the ball majorly. They dropped the ball majorly with Kenta slash Ade Otami. And New Japan are he has the briefcase for Moxley's belt. And Kent against Moxley and New Japan could be good. Uh could be very good. Uh but we're we're here to talk. We've been trying to avoid talking about this match, but uh, at least there was a better hot tag, Chris. Yes. Uh, what did what yeah. what did you think of this match in general? If for what for what it was? I guess it served its purpose. Um by all means, I mean Ascension. They were push. They were pushing so hard for Ascension at one point as well. But for Itami and Bella, they just at least it. They, it was just trying to find the time for everyone that they brought in. I think, and unfortunately, that uh, kind of with the top tier like names that they were, that they couldn't have more time like they would have done in a singles match just to really showcase what each of them were um and uh, with Itami being again the um put as the one in the face in peril and then Bala getting a hot tag and you know it was a good it was a good hot tag and it's like I say it served it served all its purpose I think that's all I can really say on it unfortunately um and it was a it was a good finish it was a good enough finish um and yeah what what, uh, what else do you expect when you have Ascension leading a match, I suppose? <laughs> yeah, the, the coup de grace to the back of the head was pretty good. It, yeah. Tommy took every every bit of the first bit of this match getting beaten did, the crap out of did. waiting for that uh, hot tag. Mm. Um, and again, dive mark here. Um, 
Ballard's toe pick on Hilo is always wonderful. You know, he, the way he tucks in is just, it's, um, he, oh, yeah, he yeah. gets such speed on it as well. It's unbelievable. Um, yeah, um, the big the big crowd roars are from the hot tag and uh, Tommy's attempt at a GTS. Yes. Um, yeah. I actually saw his first one live in um, in the States for WrestleMania 31 weekend. He did a house show in uh, in the in the university um, on the Friday night, and he hit against Breeze. To, what one of the biggest pops I've ever heard live. Even though I went to WrestleMania two days afterwards, mm. it was just it was it was something else to actually witness that, um, and it was something that obviously they'd been building towards. It was a shame that they just didn't broadcast it live. Because yeah. NXT, I guess, wasn't as big as it is now, obviously, at yeah. that point. I think the GTS getting teased got a big pop because of the CM yeah. Punk ties, even though Kent is the originator and the creator of the GTS. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, they fair play. They put over P- Balor and Kent to look like Itami look like mega stars. Um, yes. Too bad one, too bad one of them never really got to the heights because of his uh, yeah. shoulder injury. Um, well, Balor had a uh, bumpy road at one stage as well after SummerSlam, after just getting the Universal title as well. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't an easy road for him either. So, yeah, um, yeah, he is now your NXT champion yet again. Uh, he went on an amazing run with the first time with the with the belt, and he's back again. So let's see what he can do. Um, but uh, where do you? I don't know if you you must you. I don't know if you follow New Japan a lot, but where do you see Kenta? Where do you where would you like to see Kenta on the New Japan Totem Pole? Do you think he has the ability to be the main champion? I think yeah, I think he does. I'm not as up to date with New Japan recently because of reasons, but it's I'm I'm seeing bits of it when I can, matches when I can, and it's he he has he's had that momentum since he's come in. I think and I, uh, and I like what they've done with him, and I think he is proving that even though he is so late into his career and that he can do more than what his Noah run originally showed of him and he can actually have a character and, a, and be really good at cultivating it. Um, yeah, if, and, it's ever, if it's ever possible, him versus Katiora Shibata again, please. Thank you. Oh, um, God, yeah. You, I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> he, he, even him versus uh, Ibushi again, that would be... I don't know if it's happened yet since his return. Uh, they're not this. They're not in the same block, unfortunately. But we yeah. might get it soon. Because that's uh, old school. No, um, I think it was Noah where they faced. It must have been. Mm. But I mean, they they faced each other, and it was um, because it, Ishimori was there as well. I remember that. Um, so I mean, if they could face off, that'd be brilliant. And there's plenty of going into Wrestle Kingdom next year. However, whatever that may be, um, there's plenty of there's. A lot of possibilities open for him, so I'm, I, it's such a such a pedestrian response. But I'm excited to see where he goes. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, we move on to a um, very very good a step up. We we move up and again kick into gear into these last two matches. Mm-hmm. Charlotte versus Sasha Banks. Um, yeah, uh, Sasha calls Charlotte generically basic in the uh, pre match. Oh, sorry, before this. We got Roman. Roman Reigns was there. Um, oh, yes. I forgot yeah. what that was about. He cut a generic promo saying he can't wait to watch the main event. Mm. Um, he, he was voted wrestler of the year that year. That was the year when um, Rollins turned on him. Stuff like that. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, basic. Bit, generically basic. Oh, snap. Um, we were about to get some um, serious fighting. Uh, Charlotte and Sasha don't like each other going into this. And they're about to beat the crap out of each other. Um Charlotte, wow, she looks different. Um, I hate to, I hate to point out the elephant in the room. Um, but it's crazy to see how far she's come both in look and in the uh, belts. She's got about mm. twenty more title reigns to her name. Oh since yeah, this yeah, easily. Yeah. Um, they had a good yeah. pace from the start, though. They had a brilliant pace from the start, and I think they had the crowd, crowd hooked from the beginning, um, which is nice to see. Yeah. Um, this first thing I have in my notes, you probably have bit more for me but the stray jacket oh uh, yes yeah that yeah. was vicious that looked sore and that looked like it could dislocate the shoulder very easily if not applied correctly uh, i mean just the, the weight that these guys were pulling this the stuff out was unbelievable and like you say the straight jacket and 
it was it was one thing after the other after the other and it was it was all building up real nicely i mean we were talking about the moon salt into the summer salt sent on um earlier and like yeah dangerous as hell especially on the legs but i mean charlotte just flopped right onto her, all her body weight onto little old sasha <laughs> like, yeah that's just tiny as well compared to charlotte and yet she just did a full-on helo sent on onto <laughs> onto her just looked like she crushed her <laughs> yeah you know? um yeah, so um, is there anything? Else, do you have anything else in your notes regarding this match? I just had great pace and intensity. Um, uh, yeah, same, and just uh, the crowd. Um, the finish was good. I think it came came where just perfectly because the crowd were like, counting along with it. And whenever you got a crowd counting along with the like on the barricade going one, two. I mean, that's always a sign of a good match. I mean, no, everybody knows that. Um, yeah. And yeah, it was just brilliant start to finish. Um, I'm not even the biggest Charlotte fan, but I think this pretty much shows she does have that quality to her that unfortunately I've just lost it lost it with her in the last few years. Yeah, um, um, yeah. she won with a natural selection off the top row, which mm-hmm. looked pretty pretty vicious. Um, and she retained the NXT Women's Title. Um, yeah, speaking of Sasha, uh, according to reports, um, the planned main event for Hell in a Cell is Bailey versus Sasha inside the cell. We were talking about this feud being uh, dragged out way too long, and they even turned on each other 18 months ago and then came back together. And then now that it's going into Hell in a Cell, uh, Bailey versus Sasha, we all know on the surface that's a great match, but can you forgive how? stagnated and how poor the storyline has been uh it's kicked into gear they, what, yeah. what they've done what they've done right now is brilliant some of this bailey stuff is great her promos are fantastic she looks like a karen she should do a karen gimmick but it, it needs to be one and done and then they separate from each other i think because like i say as i mean whether they start by feuding with each other then they tag together and then they've been tagging together for so long they just need some sort of separation after this and Hell in Cell is perfect for it's just fast be all end all and it should be that but knowing them it'll probably continue for another year. <laughs> yeah, um, let's hope it doesn't because I think it'll be end on a classic um, barn burner and then um, leave the two alone and go separate ways. There's a draft coming up they could separate yeah. each other. That it'll could... be interesting to see if they could uh, try and top um, Sasha versus Becky, which is on a lot of people's lists for like last year's Money in the Bank, which I saw on Twitter. Uh, Money in the Bank match of the year <laughs> um, last year. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if Sasha can, you know, keep that momentum up, especially considering now she's faced all the four horsewomen, or will be facing all the ho- four horsewomen in the um, in Hell in a, in a Hell in a Cell match. Yeah. Um... I think it'd be perfect um, because you draft Bailey to one brand, Sasha to the other, and yeah. you have belt on the line and yeah. see who um, maybe actually sorry wins the belt stays on SmackDown. Whoever loses goes to Raw, and that's the end mm-hmm. of feud. Um, yeah. You keep them two in limbo because the draft is on the seventh or ninth of October before Hell in a Cell. So perfect way to do that. Um, that's a pitch. Um, <laughs> and. Um, Chris, we move on to what we're all here for, the main event. I'm going to let you take this away and uh, open us up here with um, two of your favorite wrestlers. I love them as well, but as a PWG mark, you um, and a WXW fan, these two have fought all over Europe. I oh, don't think this match yeah, needs any introduction, yeah. but do you want to do it as much justice as you can? I'll, just, I'll give it a good college try. Um, uh, just the, the history, the... Um... I mean, they they go so far back with each other, and the it's it's weird when you get those two opponents sometimes that they just they just gel, they just it just works, um, and you don't get it often. But when and they don't overdo it either. They had enough separation between all the matches and the independents and WWE and you know whatever it was. They the it's it's amazing how fluent and. Like they they don't bot even though even with how complicated some of their moves and reversals are, they never botch with each other. Never. And it's I uh, think that there was one botch on NXT one time that I could point out and just say, Oh yeah, maybe it was just a bit bit too far off there, whatever. Um but they still they 
they just gel with each other so incredibly well. I mean, the 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 iconic PWG matches and the fact that they were able to recreate that in the European scene as well. It's um, just insane spots that you know they were a lot older and it's they weren't going to bust out a top rope uh, poison Frankenstein <laughs> poison runner from uh, onto Zane like they were going to do in PWG. Like you know he could write off a few of those spots, but the fundamentally they always have that consistency the pacing the crowd interaction the the spots i mean just perfect it's one of my all-time favorite feuds feuds i think whether that's um indie or nxt it's one of those where i can always go back to and being blown away when i first discovered them as a god knows how many years back now um yeah working together yeah um for those who don't remember at the start of the show we're talking indeed about Sami Zayn and uh, Sami Zayn and Adrian Neville, also known as Pac. Um, this was just so fast paced at the start. The moon salt um, mm-hmm. from Sami Zayn that was the first kind of separation of the two. Oh, the Arabian salt press, and then he, yeah, the, him going into the ring, and yeah, yeah, and then that that that's when um, Neville realized that Sami is in a pushover. You could see the thing where like Sami was like, oh, "I have a chance here." Pac's like, "Oh sh." And Neville, sorry, I keep calling back. Neville, um, oh shit, this guy has a chance. And then they slow the pace down a bit um, mm-hmm. with the headlock. And uh, um, yeah, uh, Jesus, I, the just... um, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, just the, the handstand, handstand into up on the shoulders of Zayn into the blue thunder bomb. Now historically, when Pac or Neville would do a a um, uh, a cartwheel into jumping up onto Zayn's shoulders, he would then turn around to then go front to back, well, front to front with him, into a um, Frankensteiner. Now, in this match, it, they had each other so well telegraphed that he did the cartwheel in onto the shoulders. He didn't get time to turn his legs around and shift his body to the point where Zayn pushed him off his shoulders to grab him to go into the Blue Thunderbomb. I mean, it was just, it's it's stuff like that, that really, like, it just the creativity of it, and they were so far deep into the match anyway. It's like when Zayn and um, Cesaro work together, and you can see those little um, past tweakings of the when they've learned the opponents so well, like the Christian and Orton series, where they just know each other so well that they, psychology-wise, they've just... They know them to the point where they better better than they know themselves. That's probably the fear talking. I don't know, but yeah, you get where I'm coming from. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, and as we were saying, like as me and Chris are gonna watch Sami Zayn, um, Jeff Hardy, and um, AJ in the ladder match after this because Chris hasn't seen it. Um, Sami is just so good. No matter what he's doing, if he's a heel, if he's a face, he's so smart. He's so smart as a fa- as a heel, and he's so smart about what he does as a baby face. It's brilliant. Uh, just a quick side note there. Um, but what me and Chris want a main talking point, apart from obviously the elephant in the room that we're about that we're going to talk about, um, something that you see get shit on all the time, no matter what wrestling you're watching, is ref bumps. This is where ref bumps were so good and so important to this match. Chris, why was that? And why did we both say that? We both said it without even consulting each other. Yes. Oh, God. Um, just um, the the moral conflict, the moral dilemma of Zayn. Um, there was no way you could do it without a ref bump because that's the whole thing. Um, so to have the ref get knocked out not only once but twice and then... On the second time, you introduce the title into the mix and uh, the use of the prop and him looking at it and yeah, like, the- conflicting with himself. And the first time, oh, I can't remember what the first time was, but he, he was either way, he was debating with himself. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. The first time, it was just Sammy eating himself up inside, being like, what do I do? Do I go get a chair? Do I do something? Right, he, yeah. Eating yeah. himself inside. And then he hit the halluva kick and Pac fell into the ref. The ref got a few accidental digs as well. Like there was a few that they fell on his head a bit. Pack mm. and him clashed heads quite heavily. They were lucky yeah, that the but... ref didn't get knocked out. But the second time, uh, Pack had brought the belt in, um, and you could just see that Sammy was it was eating him up inside because the big mm. thing going in was 
can Sami Zayn get the big win the big one? Pac was his friend, but then he started bringing in, you can't win the big one. What are you, Sami, other than a nearly man? And Sami was eating himself on the side. Do I prove that I'm not the nearly man by cheating, or do I stick to my morals? And it was perfect. It was uh, beautiful. I just want to bring up a point of, like, this is a man who's worked in a mask for most of his career. In a mask. I'm sorry, I'm going to put it out there. We all know it's an in-joke, but whatever. Um, but this is a guy who's worked in, his ma- in a mask most of his career. To have that good acting and facial expressions... Um, to know uh, each and every one of that crowd and everyone watching at the time knew exactly what he was thinking. Even when he when he um, he wiped his face just before he did the halluva kick, um, like just stuff like that, where he wiped his face and his whole expression changed. Yeah, this is a guy who like how is he? Yeah, like that should be the thing he struggles with most. <laughs> it really shouldn't it? It should be his facial expression. Sammy doesn't struggle with anything. Well, no, exactly, yeah. And to... Uh, as El Generico for 15 years, to then go on and do that, or however many years it was, I don't know, to then go on and be such good at acting and just use of everything. It was It was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, so they set the scene. Sammy doesn't use the belt. Um, Pac gets a near fall. It's such a cool, such a good near fall. And then Sammy with an exploder into the corner and a halluva kick that sent the crowd insane. He wipes the sweat off his face, boots Neville in the face. One, two, three. Your winner and new NXT champion is Sami, Sami Zayn. And, uh, and, and that's how the show ended, everybody. Um, <laughs> no, everybody came out to celebrate with them. Owens went straight for him uh, with the stitches on his nose. When did the hug him? They seemed like they clashed heads. Which uh, which made KO have a trickle of blood down his face, which is just perfect. Um, yeah. Uh, they we spotted a lot of people in the in the in the melee of people uh, holding them up, like Jason Jordan, Chad Gable, um, Elias, who looked like Elvis. Um, mm-hmm. So many people. Um, they held them up, but Owen slipped into the background, which is great. Uh, the crowd dispersed. Owens gave him another hug. And then Sammy sat and danced on the rope as his music's restarted. He got out of the ring. Owens walked up the ramp with him. Bah, bang! Owens slams him down on the on the grate and picks him up and power bombs him straight through the hardest part of the ring. People, I said the hardest part of the ring. Smacks him into the hardest part of the ring, and it was just beautiful. Yeah, it's um. I think Sammy just needs to learn never let Owens put his uh, arm around his shoulder because that's how it ended up in our age as well. Um, and it was just like it was it was brilliant. And I think I think we were talking about this earlier as well, where it was the use of the um, copyright um, te- um, mm-hmm. call it the copyright notice at the bottom of the. I mean that was when Triple H first used it and then used it again for Gargano and Champa. I think it was one of those subverting people's expectations um, as 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 a, as a medium, as an art form, I guess you'd say, um, to to catch people by surprise. And I think what, that was why I I love NXT then more than I do now because of those little intricacies and and little maneuvers that they did. Um, now it just, I mean, we all, I mean, it's filled with people I love, but it's just it just feels like a Indie light, I guess you'd say. I'm not the first, but the the old. It was a nice mix, indie talent and people. They were trying to home grow. I think mm-hmm. if they could have just kept that image and kept those creative ideas, like the mm-hmm. copyright thing going and then disappearing, just just things like that to keep it fresh. But I mean, this mm-hmm. is this is something that we're talking about in its infancy and very much. Um, organic that when you, you unfortunately lose that when you're trying to monopolize the whole industry i guess you'd say not to go too far into that conversation but and make it a third brand instead of oh maybe we can make it a nice um developmental brand while also just having these guys to progress other people along progress their homegrown talent in a way that they haven't learned outside of one one trainer on, almost um but that's just yeah. my, two, my two cents on it anyway yeah, this was just, this was just beautiful. Um, 
it was a pleasure to review it. Um, Sammy, obviously, we know what happened. We had a long story feud with Kevin Owens, then became his friend again. And now Sammy is doing some great work as IC champion. I love Sammy Zayn. He is yes. pretty um, <laughs> Sammy, we he, love you. Yeah, Sammy, if you ever want to come on the podcast, that would be an honor um, and amazing. Um, but yeah, I think that's where we end it because me and Chris want to watch some um, some uh, more that, Sammy Zayn. We're going to watch Triple yeah. Threat and then uh, we have, we have um, other business to attend to. So 45 minute mark, that is the beautiful sweet spot. Thank you for listening. The Takeover Throwbacks was a pleasure. Chris, where can we find you on the Twitter? Uh, uh, Rio Standido, the Rio Standido. Great Twitter that, account, uh, wholesome, nothing but positivity and Bandido um, content. <laughs> um, honestly, one of the best people I know. Um, so oh, go and give a follow. And Thank you for having me again. No problem. You'll be hearing a lot more of Chris uh, in the future. We have a few things that we're in the infancy of planning, and I hope to hear him very soon again on this podcast because he, as you as you just heard, he is very very good at uh, at speaking about wrestling and very passionate. Um, and that turns into a good product. So um, thank you uh, for listening. I've been your host, the man of Janice Forgot, uh, Rian. Um, you can find us on Hallway Graphs Pod and at Project Dits. Um, it's a pleasure to be part of Project Dits. Um, you're listening to us on Project Dits right now. Um, if you want to get catch some, I don't know if Chris knows this. Chris, I haven't told Chris this, but he's probably seen it. Um, we have merch. Um, so um, if you want to grow up some Hallway Wrestling Podcast merch, there's the man of Janice Forgot t-shirts. There is... Um, uh there is kieran t-shirts there is uh logo t-shirts and og logo t-shirts at tpublic.com forward slash hallway wrestling podcast there's a site wide site wide sale going on right now so copy yourself some merch and help out the boys um but yeah um i've been obviously rain uh chris has been my co-host for today um and as we say at the end of every episode of the hallway wrestling podcast stay safe wash your hands vote no, actually, don't say that. Don't don't say vote. It's illegal, <laughs> it's illegal to sway people. It's illegal to sway people. Vote Sami Zayn for president. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> vote Sami Zayn for president and vote Bandito for um for se- for se- for second president. <laughs> yes, um, co-presidents, baby, co-president. Um, goodbye, people.